God bless you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatsoever it is. I am so thankful that you tuned in today. You turned it on, you plugged it in, whatever you do to get this signal. We thank God that you are there. And we thank God for the opportunity to be able to rejoice together in the wonderful things that our Father is doing and continues to do in our lives. Uh, today, the Holy Spirit put on my heart to continue what we were talking about yesterday, only to take it to the next one. Uh, we were speaking about the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. And uh, this came in from a request, uh, curiosity, to know that if a Christian can hold or possess all nine gifts, if God will give you all nine gifts, and we believe that he will, and he is fully able, and scripture backs this up, because, um, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all, for to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills, 1 Corinthians 12, 7 through 11. So, of course, the Lord is going to give you what he feels he, what he has created you for. You know, uh, some people, they're terrific at one thing, but they, you know, I, I always laugh and say I'm a jack of a lot of trades and a master at none <laughs> because the only thing that I profess is Jesus is my Lord and it's up to him whatever he wants to do through me and I am happy to do any job that the Lord gives me and I am also thankful for all of the giftings that I have seen him operate not only through myself but through many other people that I know and I say the old story says in this scripture knock and keep on knocking Ask and keep on asking, and to all that knock, the door is, will be opened. So today I want to move into the gift of prophecy and the gift of faith. Those two I want to hit on today. Hit on today. That sounds so bad, doesn't it? Crazy. Okay, I want, first let's lift up our oil. We thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. You're so wonderful, Lord. We praise you. We give you all the glory. We thank you, Lord. Now be with us now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord. And Lord, I want to lift up a few special uh, urgent prayer requests. I pray for Carlos that is still in the hospital, Lord. This is up to your hand. The doctors have given a bad report, but Father, you are the one that has the final report. <clears throat> so we speak to his brain from this trauma that happened in his head, Father, by a board hitting him in the head. And Lord, we speak that all the swelling would go down, that Holy Spirit, you would visit him in the room. Oh, Jesus, walk right in the room. Heal him, touch him, and bring him back, Father, better than before, in the name of Jesus. We cover this with the blood. Lord, also, I pray for Jessica in Texas, Father, that is experiencing seizures. In the name of Jesus, you foul demonic spirit, loose her, let her go now in the name of Jesus. We adjure you, we call you out in the name of Jesus. We command you, you foul demonic spirit trying to bother Jessica, leave her now in the name of Jesus. Loose her and let her go in the name of Jesus. And we all said amen and amen. Um, okay, I want to welcome musically 
Keely. I love that. In the name of Jesus, Father, we pray over Musically Keely. Oh, Father God, you know the giftings. You know the mighty, mighty, mighty giftings, giftings, giftings. In the name of Jesus, we pray your blessing. All this music, all these songs in the name of Jesus, that you bless Keely in the name of Jesus. And we thank you and we give you all the glory. More real, more real, more, 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 he says, more, more, more. I'm taking you to deeper depths and higher heights. And he's going to show you so much. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you, Judy. So wonderful to have you as a new subscriber. I pray over you, Judy, that God richly bless your household, that all the people are under the blood of Jesus. Anything that might be out of order, we speak it back into order because you are a God of order in the name of Jesus. If there be any rebellious spirits, you know, and these are just crazy things that I, I feel the Lord is showing me that there are uh, crazy, you know, we all have things in our family, every one of us, that we rebuke all these bad spirits out constantly. We tell them to exit stage left and don't come back <laughs> in the name of Jesus. So uh, we just pray over you, Judy, that God blesses, blesses, blesses in the name of Jesus. Michael, God bless you. Are you a cowboy or is that a horse you're sitting on? <laughs> what is that? Is that guitars? Do you make guitars? What do you do? That's, uh, I can't really see the picture sort of small, but you are a person that is down to earth, grassroots, hands on kind of guy. You uh, love the Lord and you're, I call it a blue collar worker, you know. Actually, you're a green collar worker. You're out in the field there. <laughs> and I see God has blessed you with such wonderful giftings. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for Michael, Father. Now bless him, bless him, bless him every day of his life. Bless him and protect him and prosper him as well. In the name of Jesus. Okay, I want to thank Cassie. God bless you. That's a cute little picture. And Tom, I see, wow, the word that really hits me is a crazy kind of thing. It's almost renegade, renegade, renegade. And, and all I mean that I, I feel the Lord is showing me by that is that you are a, you're an uh, upfront, what you see is what you get kind of guy. You're very sensitive to the Holy Spirit, but you could get out and wrestle with with a, a bear <laughs> and you could get out with the best of them and 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 uh but you you love the lord and that is what i love the most that is what i see and that is what i love is is uh when we see the lord in the eyes you know i used to pray uh, i used to pray that's a good one right i used to pray and i still do <laughs> but anyway um you know, when I would go out and I would minister and the Lord would tell me, he'd say, go look in the mirror. I was like, what? Go look in the mirror. Well, you know, when you are in the presence of God in a strong way, it's like you are removed off of this planet. You, you are walking in another dimension and people can see the Father in your eyes because the eyes are the mirror of the soul. We all know this. And anyway, God bless you, Cindy. You are a princess warrior for the Lord. God bless you, Marie, in the name of Jesus. God bless you, Christy. Just love the beautiful presence of the Lord that's all over you. Wow. Rosie, God bless you. And so many others. Jamie, God bless you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, let's get into this. Um, the gift of prophecy, this next gift may just be the greatest of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, the gift of prophecy. Why? Because it says, seek ye, you know, it says to be, uh, seek the gift of prophecy, you know, uh, that we should seek earnestly this gift because this gift 
speaks life into people. It speaks what God would see into that person where they can go. And still life is a choice. You know, you, you could go out and you can give a word to someone. Doesn't mean that it's going to happen because sometimes that person is not going to receive that word, even if it's a blessing. Or it's going to be a conditional word that God is going to say, hey, this is what I see you as. But if you don't walk in my... <clears throat> If you don't walk in my ways, then it's going, you're going to be going in another direction. So I want to continue here. This next gift may just be the greatest of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Um, the Apostle Paul, in the second verse, purposely singles out this gift when telling you to seek after spiritual gifts. He says in this verse, to desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. With him purposely singling out the gift of prophecy in comparison to the rest of the nine gifts in this verse, I believe that this may, uh, may be a t uh, tell to us that the gift of prophecy may be the greatest in the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. And when you think about exactly what this gift is all about, I believe that he may be right on the money. The gift of prophecy is when you get a direct word from the Lord to usually give to someone else. And when I say a direct word, I mean the message from the Lord that will be given to you will be literally be word for word. So many times people stand up and they'll give a word and you know the Lord is nowhere near. The word, sometimes people mean well, but they're not really submitted to God. They're just out there showing off, you know, and it's, it's, uh, it's a, might even be an edifying word, but it might have nothing to do with the real word of God because the real word of God cuts to the marrow of the bone, divides, and it goes right to the heart. It speaks right to the center of a person where they live inside. And also it will be this overwhelming knowing like, oh my God, how could you know that? And it will be something sometimes that will be something that you haven't even ever publicly said, but some we used to call it. Well, God read your mail <laughs> because that's basically what's happening is somebody opened up your mail and no one even knew that it was coming in the mail except God. And God not only revealed it, but God then shows you a better way, a focusing on a positive scenario, we'll say, of what he is speaking into your life that it you can it's always growth it's always that god is taking you usually to a higher height a deeper depth a more real picture of him and more interaction with the holy spirit as well and many times it's going to be a word that it is a confirmation Rarely have I seen someone come up and give a word and the person that received the word never had a clue, was totally clueless. You know, it didn't even make sense. Usually those are just words out of the flesh, like I say. But when a word comes from the Holy Spirit, you know it is divine. You know it came from the throne. You know because a lot of times it's going to be things that you've only been saying in secret to the God, to the Lord. And this will be maybe the first time that it's been confirmed back to you something you know that this is yeah that's me it's like when i was uh, uh praying in the last pew and i said father if you want me to do this then you let me know would you know the evangelist stopped the meeting right then pointed at me in the last pew and I thought I was going to die. I thought I was just going to fall down and never get up again. He looked at me and he said, you in the back row, he said, come forward. Oh my God, come forward. 
So I tried to get up and I got up and I stood up. I walked forward and I just closed my eyes because I wanted to know that this was God or this was not God. And yet he gave me a word and that man literally was used by God Almighty to speak life into me. And I knew it was the Lord. There was no doubt about it because this man told me things he had could never have had knowledge of, things that I had never even spoken in public, and the timing of it as well. The immediate, right when I said that prayer, boom, that's when that guy called me forward, immediately stopped the service. You see, that preacher was led by the Spirit. There's so many preachers out there that are not led by the Holy Spirit. So there's not going to be any room for genuine prophecy, something that's really real. <clears throat> because, you see, this is the difference of God having a service or man having a service. Man allowing God to flow in the Spirit. God to, excuse me, God, man allowing God to flow in the service or to quench the Spirit. You know, we've all been in meetings where they have quenched the Spirit. And we've said, oh my God, if they just let it go, why are they afraid? These pastors are so afraid. And so we pray. And God will assign you a church. And then he will say, okay, it's time to get up and go. Because either they will not receive what you have been sent in there to give them, which I know several of you have probably experienced that, you know, or God will say the season is over. I'm taking you to another place now for whatever reason. You know, our walk in this, in this life is the walk that Christ is leading us in. It's not about where we want to go, what we want to do. It's about what God wants to do. Because if you truly love the Lord, every day you get up, you just say, what do you want me to do, Father? What do you want? Not my will, but thine. The gift of faith, this next gift, the gift of faith, is something that comes directly from the Holy Spirit. This is so true. The Bible tells us that we all have certain measure of faith that has already been given to us by the Lord. This is true. To each is given a measure of faith. God has to give each person a certain measure of faith or we would not be able to get saved. That's right. As the Bible tells us that we are saved by faith through grace. Amen to that. And then over the course of our walks with the Lord, our faith will continue to grow to higher levels as we continue to draw closer to the Lord in our own personal relationship with him and increase in our and increase our knowledge levels about him through the study of scripture the gift of faith the gift of faith is like when you just simply know that you know that you know and there's no doubt about it in fact when you have this gift of faith comes on you you see, you step over the line and you stop believing whatever man would say or what your, your um, conscience would say, what your uh, man part of you would say. No, you stop. You totally stop all that thought pattern and you take on the mind of Christ and all of a sudden you are changed and you've stepped over that line and you say now no matter how ridiculous this sounds in the natural how impossible it sounds even if i'm not gifted in a certain thing that you've told me that you want me to do father whatever you say is the final word and i'm getting it's coming out of my hands right now because i know that's god totally 100 percent that somebody needs to hear this right now you have been there's a decision that you've been you're having to make and you're wondering should i just do what is logical 
what people have told me, you should do this, but you could do all of these things. But God says to you, but I'm calling you over to there, to that place, not over there where they say it is. I'm telling you, it's not there. It's there where I say it is. Because there is the walk of faith. There is the place where I will instill in you. I will put in you great faith. And great faith is simply taking me on my word. Great faith is not questioning with your own mind or listening to what other people might say about what I have told you. Great faith is not questioning me at all, the Lord would say. But great faith is saying, yes, Father, I can't wait for that to happen. I've totally flipped my mind over any doubts. I've left them, and I'm saying, I totally believe you, Lord. And now you're in expectation of it. In fact, you're, you it's already happened in your mind. Because you see, when God tells you something, you are changed you're really different and you're very it, it is it's already done as far as you're concerned because god has spoken to you the lord always would tell me if you'll only believe if you'll only believe you see that is the place of great faith if you'll only believe no matter what god has told you no matter how impossible i don't care if it rains it snows i don't care if god has said it it's a done deal and that is resonating right now with someone thank you jesus so that's where i'm going to stop and we're going to pray now and tomorrow we're going to pick up on the gift of healings and the working of miracles. Oh, I cannot wait. Okay, I want to read now a few things that have come in. Josie at Josie Music says, We can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, and with this comes nine manifestations. Nine manifestations? Well, at least that's the way I see it. Great video, Sister Susan. Keep them coming. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you, Josie. And your music is wonderful. Love your praise to the Father. God bless you, Sister. See you in the clouds. Amen. I see you in the clouds. And another one comes back. Uh, I'm going back to what the Lord has done in my life and is continuing to do. Uh, this sister is the one reason I'm doing this and all of this, this whole, whatever you want to call it, series, a few videos on this, talking about the nine gifts, because uh, she has gone through a whole lot of garbage with garbage churches. You know, we've all been there, done that. I'm going back. After all of that, she says, I'm going back. <laughs> Amen to what the Lord has done in my life and is continuing to do. P.S. I will be sewing into your ministry in a little bit. I love you, Susan. You're the real deal. Thank you, Jesus. That is a prophetic word in my life because I've had the Lord tell me that through very prophetic people. They've said, Susan, you are the real deal. You are the real deal. You know, it has to be real with me because he's all I have. He's the one that I know can make it work. He's the only one that has the answers that make any sense at all, no matter how ridiculous it sounds in the natural, because he loves me and he loves you. So many lifeless religious people without relationship with the Holy Spirit, who is our only hope for victories. God bless you. God bless you too. Uh, Leo Jenian, I would like your opinion. Oh, wait a minute. She asked me this. I already answered that the other day. Moving on. Pray for Jessica. I wanted to mention Roger sent in a beautiful note regarding yesterday's video. God bless you, Susan. I have received gifts from the Holy Spirit. Sometimes it scares me. Sometimes I don't feel worthy. But I still do what I am led to do. See, that's obedience, which is better than sacrifice. I once asked God what my life, what my wife, my life, my wife would look like 
or even if I would ever have a wife. Have we, have we been there? <laughs> I had a flash image in my mind of a woman I didn't know. A month later, I saw, I seen her. I knew she was the one I married her. We've been together for 21 years. Thank you, Lord. May God bless you always, Susan, for all you do. You know, the Lord gave uh, Stephen before he met me years ago. He asked the Lord to show him a picture of who he was going to be with. And the Lord did it. And soon thereafter, we met. And the rest is, rest is history, right? And, and that's because still new things are coming about in God's future. And this is the way that we act day by day. We expect God is going to continue to show us miraculous, wonderful things in the name of Jesus. El Rainbow Lightning. Hello, Susan. Always a blessing to feel God's holy presence through you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for praying for me. I'm trusting in Jesus Christ himself. Amen and amen. Desperate to be raptured. My soul yearns for heaven. I feel so alone and only God can help me. I need to find a true, honest man of God, someone who can face earth's battles with. Thank you, Lord. We pray for this precious sister. Oh, Lord God, we thank you so much that you are with her in a mighty rushing wind, he says over you. Thank you, Lord. Ooh, you just felt that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, God is so funny because we can pray for each other. Then all of a sudden, God's going, you know, I'll, I'll get a chill or something will happen, you know, or, or even like uh, some people in, in uh, our own history as believers that all of a sudden they would do something crazy, you know, and you go, wow, what in the world is that? Well, you know what? A lot of times that is the power of God. And I don't mean people doing stupid things like barking like dogs. No, I'm not. I'm not up for that one. But I'm talking about where God would all of a sudden stop an evangelist, freeze them in time. Didn't you love that? Or like the time that Stephen and I was having a meeting and this, ev and this evangelist also came and we were praying over people. I have seen so much. And these people were falling backwards, getting slain in the spirit in slow motion. <laughs> I just loved it. It was so good. I mean, and they were just, you knew it was God because it was so impossible because they were falling down, falling down slow. It was impossible. Okay. A person can start to slow go backwards slowly, right? But once you reach a certain place, you're going to fall. And they never did that. They just kept falling backwards slowly, slowly, slowly until they touched the ground. Now that's impossible. But you see, that's the real God. That is the real deal. Another time I, I laid my hands on a lady that asked for deliverance for uh, something in her inside of her stomach area and so she we just I began to pray I put my hand right there she says it's right there I said okay so I put my hand right there she fell down under the power of God she laid there and the sisters came around and I put my hand on that thing and would you know it was there we could all see it, it was like a bump right on her stomach and you know what happened that thing started running and running and running because it was scared because it was exposed once the devil is exposed he has to run and hide, but he was exposed, you see. So we just keep praying and praying and believing. And now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I lift up my hands, and I know that you're lifting up your hands, Father God, back to us, that you are blessing us with this day that we will go forward in. Oh, Father I speak your healing virtue now. Let it flow like a river. And it is, you know, it's resonating. It's resonating out of my hands. And I can feel it resonating like a, like a tidal wave. It's just going over and over and over. And you know, 
there is like a, such a thing that the Lord's showing me. There's that riptide. And the riptide is something that you cannot even get out of because it pulls you back in. And that's what I see. And this may sound crazy, but I see the Holy Spirit is some people need a riptide to pull them back into it because it's like they get a little taste of something of God and they get scared and they want to run out the door. They want to run away. No, God's got a hold of you and he's pulling you back. And that's what I see with that one. So we thank you, Lord Jesus. You're just continuing to heal people right now. The Holy Spirit is moving in a great way. Just receive, receive, receive. For God Almighty is moving. Thank you, Jesus. It's your program, Lord. It's your program. It's not mine. It's yours, Lord. It's yours to do with whatever you want. We thank you as you're just flowing. He's just, he, you know, he is just really, really moving right now in a mighty way. Thank you, Jesus. Just receive, receive, receive whatsoever you need. Some are being baptized in a heavenly language right now in the gift of tongues. Some are receiving now the discernment of tongues. Some are now receiving the gift of healings. Some are receiving now the gift of discernment, discerning spirits. Some are receiving now the gift of prophecy. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. More, 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 more. He says, more, more, more. I'm pouring all over you. Thank you, Jesus. And the devil is fighting, but God is glad. And God wins every time. Somebody just fell over and you start laughing, laughing, laughing. And you don't, it's like, you, this is not your normal thing. But you see, this happened also in a meeting Stephen and I had. The people didn't even make it in the building because God was working his miracles through them before they ever even came. And there were so many witnesses of this. And these were serious people. These were not people that, you know, would clown around normally. Nothing. God touched them. And God's doing it now. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We praise your name. We bless your name. We're just going to have a day of miracles one of these days. We're just going to call it out. We're just going to call it out for what it is and let God do everything he wants to do. We're just going to have a program, Father God, of miracles. And maybe that'll be one of these gifts that we get into, Father God. In the name of Jesus, that you will choose to do that, Lord. Oh, we praise you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Now bless us, anoint us, appoint us as we go about our day. We love you, Lord, and we give you all the glory. Use us. Use us. Use us this day in Jesus' name. Remember, you are the real deal if you have that Holy Spirit in you. If you are a born-again believer in Jesus, ask, and you will receive. He will give it to you. He's no respecter person. Just look up and say, Father, I want it, all of it. I want all nine gifts. Be careful what you ask for. <laughs> in Jesus' name, I love you. Thank you for your praise reports, your prayer requests. Please keep them coming in so we can lift you up before the Lord. Those that have ordered oh, the oil, it is going out tomorrow again. And uh, we thank you, Father God, for those that have given to the ministry financially. Let it return 1,000-fold in every way, Lord. Jobs, 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 he says, are on the way. Somebody and several ones are looking for work. God says, ask me. I'm going to show you which one it is in Jesus' name. I love you. Have a blessed day with the Lord in Jesus' name.